Um, hello, thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm Dmitry, I'm an innovation architect from the Cisco Intercloud Services. And Cisco Intercloud Services, we're thinking about, and the NCTO group where I'm from, we're really thinking about the future of Hadoop and future of data in the cloud for the next uh, six months, one year. Uh, we're really trying to think about how to present data on the cloud, how to process data on the cloud, how to make that process data be available on the cloud as well. Uh, there's a lot of technologies that are going into that, as you know. It seems like everything is changing every couple of months. There's new stuff coming up. Uh, the cool thing about being in Cisco is that we get to partner with a lot of great partners in multiple different areas, and we also have a lot of customers that come to us and say, I have a particular problem, we really want to solve it. We have networking, we have a lot of data. How do I you know, basically figure out how to process that data and deploy that data quickly? Uh, one of the great partners that we have is Hortonworks that uh, we've been working with them for almost a couple of years now. And uh, they definitely have some of the more interesting technology out there. Specifically, you probably most of you heard about Docker. Of course, all of you heard about Hadoop. So one of the, the really cool things that uh, Coinworks have done in the, next, in the last six, seven months is uh, actually came up with a way to merge those two technologies and leverage one technology with the other and specifically start deploying Hadoop on Docker. You know, the technical details we'll discuss further, but you know, as you know, the main advantage of Docker is really packaging things and deploying it really quickly. Um, so that's something that we're going to cover today. We already started rolling it out in Cisco, and um, we think that's really the future of what's coming up. So very interesting area. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm from uh, Hortonworks uh, product management team. Uh, and Dimitri is, like, as you mentioned, like we, work, we are working together to make this uh, Hadoop uh, deployment possible in Cisco InterCloud by using some of the uh, new technologies on the container side uh, called Docker. Um, how many of you are like, aware of Docker as a technology? OK. So yeah, it's kind of uh, uh, very quickly becoming a standard. Uh, we'll talk about first how we are doing the Hadoop provisioning. And then uh, we'll get into details about how we are using Docker and the Docker-related technologies for doing it in a cloud-agnostic fashion so that it, it can be done in your laptop to your cloud in the same way. So this is kind of the high-level agenda. Uh, we'll just quickly go over like a little bit about what uh, about the Hortonworks, like what we do, uh, what we stand for. Uh, then we'll talk about the, this new product we have uh, pushing as a part of the, our uh, data platform, like Hortonworks data platform called CloudBreak, uh, which is the, the provisioning and uh, auto-scaling tool for Hadoop, uh, primarily focusing on the public clouds and uh, private cloud, like uh, OpenStack based. Then we'll talk about the, like a, we'll give a quick introduction about the Docker. Um, I, I'm not planning to go cover uh, Docker in details because that's going to be its, itself is a, uh, uh, two hours presentation probably. Uh, and then we'll talk about the how we are using Docker uh, for provisioning Hadoop in uh, cloud. So Hortonworks is 100% uh, open source uh, Hadoop company. Uh, we kind of, whatever we develop uh, in the Hadoop technologies, we kind of contribute back everything to the Apache. Um, we are uh, just recently went public uh, last year, end of last year. Uh, we are kind of uh, first uh, pub, uh, Hadoop distribution company to go public. Uh, we have around, uh, this number is a little bit off. Uh, we have like uh, kind of uh, north of 300 uh, odd customers and then 1,000 uh, plus technology partners because of our open uh, platform and the, all the open source uh, technology, we kind of work with a lot of partners to build the whole ecosystem, and we focus on the core Hadoop offering. So it's founded in 2011 by uh, 24 engineers who came out of uh, Yahoo, uh, who is uh, initially developed the Hadoop technology based on the Google. 
Google Map Reduce uh, research paper, if you guys are familiar with. And they kind of created this Hadoop technology for Yahoo's advertising platform. And then uh, when Hortonworks started, they kind of made it available for the, all the companies who wants to do the big data analysis in their own uh, ways, on uh, building build big data application in their own data centers. And uh, this is a kind of our whole ecosystem where we work with the Cisco, um, who is uh, like a, one of the data center leader, uh, and work with the, their uh, hardware platform as well as their cloud platform, as well as other all other uh, um, enterprise application um, or software development uh, companies uh, around the world. So now getting to the main part of the this talk is like we'll cover these four different aspects. Uh, I have a uh, slot for demo, but we'll see like if you have the time to go through that in details. So the first I'll talk about the Cloud Break, which is the, the provisioning tool, uh, part of the uh, Hortonworks data platform. Uh, it is uh, like a Hadoop provisioning tool for the cloud and OpenStack. So this is kind of uh, created by uh, Bunch of people uh, out of the co company called Sequence IQ, based out of uh, Budapest, um, which is uh, recently acquired by Hortonworks uh, and made it part of the uh, Hortonworks data platform uh, offering. So it, this is an open source uh, product uh, uh, with the Apache 2 license, but we plan to uh, contribute back it to the, the Apache Software Foundation um, as soon as possible. Um, that's kind of our all our projects uh, of uh, what we uh, deliver is part of that uh, Apache Software Foundation. Then uh, it it uses the Apache Ambari, which is a Hadoop's uh, management uh, tool uh, for uh, installing the Hadoop uh, services uh, in uh, cloud uh, using a mechanism called Blueprint, which is a kind of uh, a declarative way of uh, specifying how you are. Uh, Hadoop cluster you want to look like. And then it also manages this uh, cluster as a elastic cluster where uh, it can monitor and the metrics of the different services in this cluster and then make the required uh, adjustments uh, by expanding the cluster or the downsizing the cluster based on the metrics as uh, it is monitoring. And then it also provides a full uh, cloud lifecycle management, like from the infrastructure perspective. Like if you have to add more nodes uh, for a, uh, like infrastructure reasons, or you have to make some changes in the networking, uh, it can also provide the functionality right there. It is, comes with a UI, uh, but it has also a REST API and the shell. So this is the kind of in a nutshell what it does. Like you uh, pick a blueprint, which is a uh, how your Hadoop cluster will look like. Pick up the, your cloud provider, provide the cloud uh, instance details, like what kind of machines you want to use uh, for your Hadoop uh, services. And then you just launch the Hadoop uh, platform in that uh, cloud uh, environment. You have uh, different choices for the blueprints. There are uh, blueprints which is already loaded in the system, uh, which you can use. But you can also use uh, the blueprint you are uh, authoring or you are getting it from the communities, uh, Apache Ambari communities. Uh, so this is the kind of uh, technical ways that these are the four steps. Uh, First, you select the machines, uh, what kind of machines you want to use. Uh, we support a heterogeneous Hadoop cluster. Uh, what does that mean? That you can use a different kind of machines for the different Hadoop services or different Hadoop service components. Like for master services, you want to use different kind of uh, machine uh, compared to uh, your slave services. You then you select the blueprint, uh, which is again I mentioned like a declarative uh, definition of the your Hadoop cluster. Provide the uh, your credentials. Uh, it is like a, a role-based credential we use. We are not really storing the uh, your username uh, pa passwords for the security reasons. You need to just provide us the the role-based authentication mechanism for which is supported by most of the uh, cloud providers. Uh, and then you launch the cluster with the different combinations of that. 
there are some uh, specialized blueprints uh, already available as part of the product as well as the in the community which you can use but you can also have a option to create the blueprint or import a blueprint which is you may have created from your existing Hadoop cluster and then uh, it has a support for uh, this auto scaling functionality which is kind of make use of uh, your cloud uh, elasticity in a optimized fashion uh, the way you can have your Hadoop cluster uh, spin up and spin down based on the, your load and based on the, your requirements of the uh, services, uh, requ uh, like how much uh, infrastructure it will require. It has a policies like which is defined based on the SLAs. Uh, so you can create your uh, rule-based policies, uh, which is um, can create an alert as well as do some auto scaling for functionality based on your uh, those metrics thresholds. So the, the way it works is like you first define uh, the metrics uh, you want to track, um, you, uh, then you create the policies uh, which is uh, defining the thresholds and the actions, and then let uh, uh, CloudBread take care of the rest uh, in an ongoing basis. So now let's get into like a, why, uh, how it uh, does this, all this magic. The first part of what it does, uh, CloudBreak, is that it uses the uh, Docker technology, which is the, the containerization of the, uh, your software, uh, to use uh, in an isolated, isolated fashion. First, it uh, does like a, create the VMs in a, any cloud provider, uh, which has already a Docker daemon built in, uh, where uh, it has a, just the Docker host already installed. Uh, so that is, it's kind of required like uh, uh, this uh, OS version, which is uh, support for Docker. Uh, but uh, it, it, it doesn't require anything uh, uh, like beyond what uh, uh, Hadoop is already supports. Second part is that uh, the many of the cloud providers already, uh, including Cisco, uh, already having the, their standard VMs, uh, standard Linux VMs already has a support of uh, Docker uh, inbuilt. So that uh, you, this part of the, the VM creation is kind of more, uh, getting more uh, uh, rudimentary uh, in the, cl the cl emerging cloud uh, technologies. Second part is that it does that it creates a uh, bootstrapping process for the cloud break to work, uh, because after the, the, the VMs are set up, uh, it also needs to create an internal network, which is uh, Hadoop uh, relies on, uh, which is we do it using a project called Consul, uh, which creates an uh, internal network with a DNS um, mapping uh, built in, uh, which is used by uh, the, all the Hadoop services, including the Apache Ombari to monitor and manage uh, all the different nodes in the cluster. Then it uses the Swarm, uh, which is uh, another uh, Docker technology, which uh, t can uh, distribute the Docker containers in a uh, Docker managed system. Then uh, it uh, starts the, all the Ambari agents, which is the, the management agents of the Hadoop, uh, to these uh, Docker containers, uh, using a Docker container uh, in all those VMs. Then at the end, uh, these uh, Docker agents and uh, all the, uh, yeah. Uh, all the Docker agents, uh, then when it starts up, it kind of connect to, uh, the Ambari server, which is again another Docker uh, container uh, over the network which is set up by the console. And then uh, Ambari uh, takes care from there uh, to uh, spawn the Hadoop services based on the blueprint CloudBreak provided. Yeah, you have a question? So Swarm is a, uh, one way is a good because Swarm provides the Docker native functionalities and the Docker native APIs. And then Swarm is also allowing you to kind of plug in the different cartridge. Uh, one of the cartridge is uh, uh, Kubernetes. But then you have an option of uh, adding more cartridge like uh, Mesos and other things. So that's why we kind of stuck with the, stick with the, the Swarm because uh, that gives us a, like a same level of API compatibility with any infrastructural um, resource placement uh, thing you are choosing because many cloud providers have many choices.
So this is the kind of how the overall high level, how the CloudBreak uh, uses the Docker technology and the VM and the cloud technologies to spin up the Hadoop cluster. Let's get into a little bit more details about uh, like what is Docker uh, for the people who are kind of not very familiar with the Docker. I'll just give a quick uh, refresher. So Docker is a kind of shipping container for your softwares. Um, it's uh, built on top of the technologies which is uh, Linux introduced in 2005 called Linux containers. Um, and then uh, what the Docker did is like a, created a, a more simplified API and the, the all, whole uh, ecosystem around it to make that uh, uh, Linux container usable for the application developers and the system admins. So it's a great thing about the Docker is that uh, once you containerize your application, you are kind of isolated all the dependencies from the software perspective to that container itself. So you, you are not really relying on any uh, dependencies of the, the box or host or uh, for the software part of it. Second part is that also it is, uh, gives you a runtime isolation in terms of uh, uh, the security, in terms of the network, in terms of the CPU and memory uses in some level. Um, so that way, like, uh, what it enables you to do that is that you, after you containerize your application, you can run that application in your laptop or in your cloud in the same way uh, without any dependency on the, any underlying infrastructure. Second part is that uh, once you do the containerization for a uh, system admin, it is immaterial what is inside the Docker container. Like, it can be a web app or it can be a Hadoop. Uh, the deployment of that uh, container and the management of the container is happens at a Docker level, not really the application level. So that way, like you can, uh, system admins can optimize their um, workflow to just manage the these Docker containers at large, and especially like with the uh, applications uh, frameworks like Kubernetes and um, Mesos and Yarn it is becoming very easy to manage those uh, containers uh, in a uh, large scale uh, data centers or in a cloud. So in a, in a summary, what, what what's Docker is, like it's a lightweight portable containers uh, for your software. Uh, it can, uh, you can build it once and then run everywhere because uh, it is just depends on um, the availability of the Docker daemon in that machine apart from anything else. It's a VM, like a, the way VM works in a hyper, on top of hypervisor, but it doesn't really package the OS part of this uh, because it just relies on the, uh, the, the Docker host and the, the, the Linux uh, core or Linux kernel which is uh, Docker host is depends on. It can be isolated like uh, in a some uh, uh, thing like it can be resource con constrained, like you can specify how much uh, memory or how much CPU you want to take, uh, which is not a very sophisticated level like the Yarn or Mesos, but it has some capability around that. And then it can be automated and scripted because all the Docker containers, uh, even without like inside, it may be something very different, but outside for the management pers perspective, it's all same. You have a question? So the developers love it uh, because uh, once you build it and you uh, distribution and shipping is like a, a, a no-brainer. Like what Java did at a programming level, uh, Docker is doing it as a more of a deployment packaging level. So once you Dockerize your application, you can give it to your QA, you can give it to your operations, and don't need to worry about like they are missing some configurations or they're missing uh, dependencies. Uh, DevOps, they, they love it as well because it kind of improves their uh, the manageability because the, all the applications looks now all same. Uh, they don't have to deal with uh, these Ansible and Puppet scripts to manage the configurations anymore. Uh, they can uh, have the developers do all, the, all those uh, hard work to uh, make that uh, Docker image uh, self-contained. Uh, this is in a high level how it uh, looks like compared to a VM, um, where VM has uh, like every apps, uh, if you want to ship as a VM, you are kind of adding the OS, you are adding all the li libraries it requires, um, which makes it uh, very heavy. 
Whereas in the container side or the Docker, uh, all the apps and all the um, Docker subsystem can share the same libraries when they are matching. Otherwise, it's kind of make sure that it is uh, do the all the delta of any libraries it may. And it has a very uh, good way of managing the versions and managing the, the polymorphic uh, behavior of the different uh, containers. That way it can uh, keep the, whatever is sh same, it can keep all of them uh, as shared, but whatever is different, then it can manage that separately. Now let's talk about how we uh, use the Docker uh, for doing the Hadoop provisioning. So I talked about the high level workflow, what CloudBreak does uh, to make that happen. Um, but uh, if you see like how the way um, in a, uh, when it's running, the way it looks like is that you have a cloud provider or bare metal, generally all the cloud providers now having a virtual machine layer, uh, if you want it or not. Um, that's the way they deliver you the infrastructure. Uh, now, uh, many of the cloud providers are going towards a containerized uh, system where they are not going to deliver you a VM, but they are going to allow you to run the, uh, your containers uh, directly on their uh, bare metal boxes. Uh, once that happens, that VM layer goes away. But after that, uh, everything remains same because the, the Docker and then uh, it's running the Ambari and Ambari server and the Ambari agent, which is the uh, Hadoop's uh, management layer. And then CloudBreak uh, itself is delivered as a Docker containers or set up Docker containers, which you can uh, either you can uh, download and uh, run it in your uh, own um, laptop, or you can uh, run it in an edge node of the cluster where you are planning to uh, spin up the Hadoop. We use uh, Swarm and Console for, uh, I think I briefly mentioned. Uh, the Swarm, we use it for uh, placing the, all the Docker containers in an automated fashion in the um, Docker managed system, like which is the whole cloud, uh, like whatever you uh, specified. And then we use the uh, Console, uh, which is another open source technology for creating the internal network between the Docker uh, containers. So currently, Docker containers, the networking is uh, not really part of the Docker containers uh, thing. They have a very uh, uh, different ways of uh, creating, uh, uh, like connecting to each other. Uh, Multi-container support for Docker is still in infancy. So console is kind of taken a stab at it, uh, providing a, a, a virtual network among these uh, different Docker containers by creating a artificial network bind and then uh, uh, putting a DNS layer on top of it. So uh, this is a kind of animation how uh, shows uh, what are the different steps uh, CloudBreak follows uh, to create this uh, Hadoop uh, cluster on top of these Docker uh, images. So first, uh, it creates the, as I mentioned, the create the Docker, uh, it, it spin up the Docker containers, which is contains the Ambari uh, agents and Ambari server. So it pick up only one box uh, where the Ambari server get instantiated. Uh, all other boxes where the uh, Ambari agents are, and those boxes where the Hadoop services will be running. Then it pushed the, sorry, uh, then it put the that blueprint and uh, to this Ambari server, and then Ambari server connects to all these Ambari agents to spin up the different uh, Ambari services based on the the host group, based on the the specification you have in a, a blueprint uh, about the placement of the services. And thus uh, it gets into the, this final picture where uh, you have uh, different Docker containers and a, in a different Docker host uh, running the different uh, Hadoop services. Only one thing I wanted to kind of, uh, I wanted to highlight, currently we are uh, doing uh, one container per host uh, or per VM, uh, but there's no reason we can do it multiple, but there are some networking challenges we have to solve to do that. Uh, currently we are just sticking with a one container per uh, host or per VM. So uh, why we are using uh, Docker? Uh, I think the, the reasons are very obvious. We are the, the kind of benefits uh, Docker containerization gives. That is a very uh, easy to 
pre-pull all the RPMs uh, which is required for you to install the Hadoop services uh, in a Docker container and keep it ready. Uh, so that you, during the deployment of the Hadoop cluster, uh, you are not really fetching the RPMs there. Then uh, you are, we are having the same process and same images for our dev QA prod uh, and does you. So you can, if you are running the Docker container based Hadoop, you can do the same. You don't have to have a different containers for that. And then uh, we are uh, using the same uh, uh, process for the uh, your uh, dev uh, thing and then as well as for the uh, the multiple nodes. I'm, I'll skip the demo, like I'll just go through the screenshots. So this is the running in a Cisco intercloud uh, using the Docker as the, the fundamental uh, building block. You go through this uh, flow and then you have a Hadoop cluster uh, where it's showing all the different uh, nodes where the Hadoop services are running. And one thing I actually... And then uh, this Apache Ombody is showing the, all the Hadoop services. Yeah, yeah I actually wanted to add one really interesting, cool, I think, uh, real world example is that just a couple of weeks ago, we deployed a new data center and you can see uh, it over there. And as usual, you know, when we bring up new data center, we, uh, my team, the big data team, is one of the first ones that gets to use it because we want to really run a lot of load, uh, lots and lots of data. And we have multiple different things going on at the same time and one of the clusters literally in one day we had a task to deploy one of the partners, not the same partner, but one of the projects where we had meetings after meetings after meetings looking at the Ruby scripts and you know how to provision the infrastructure and it was actually on the bare metal. And you know it was a pretty complicated architecture, but uh, just the hardware provisioning and provisioning of the VMs and the hardware took like literally a week. But when this particular data center came up, we were able to use CloudBreak solution, install the CloudBreak itself in a day, and then just spin up all these different clusters literally in 20 minutes. You know, yeah, 20, 30 minutes you have the first cluster running. So this is really, this is really cool, and we're planning on using Dimitri, it. Dimitri, do you have a booth out here that they can come see you, or? Yeah, we're actually right across a uh, couple of blocks on the booth there, so you can stop by and uh, see us, and we can talk about general Cisco strategy as well. Great, great. Uh, Dimitri, uh, Rajesh, thank you very much. We appreciate your time here today, and of course, you can see them across inside the DevNet area. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks. Thank you.